Hello everybody! And is everybody well today? I am so delighted to hear it. And me? Oh yes, still vertical and still above the grass. <laughs> and you know, we are now here in the month of June. And in England, this is basically the start of our summer. It's not warm yet, but it will be by July and August. But in the meantime, I'm enjoying the sunshine and I'm enjoying the lovely calm weather. The other thing to rejoice about is that all restrictions are lifted regarding quarantine and all the rest of it. We are now free to travel. We don't have mass mandates or any other restriction. Isn't that great? <laughs> now I know that there are some countries that are uh, dominated by despots and dictators who are still mandating quarantine lockdowns and restrictions on travel and mass mandates. I really hope that you are not living in such a country. Now, since we are free of all restrictions and quarantines, I've decided I'm going to change the title of the videos now. I'm no longer going to use quarantine freedom because, well, we no one is in quarantine in the UK. Even the EU has relinqu relinquished uh, travel restrictions and things like that, and they are really big on control. So I'm going to start calling it Ryanair 186 flies to and to wherever I'm going to go. How does that sound? Does it sound like it's a good title? Let me know if you think so. Ryanair t today is flying between Larnaca, which is LCLK, and Beirut, OLBA. Great places to go to and from. It's a short hop. It's about 150 nautical miles. It's not that far between Cyprus and Lebanon. So it'll be a nice flight. It's a good flight to make in a wonderful sunny June day. I've got some lovely scenery. Now, Larnaca scenery, that's the LCLK, that airport scenery is made by JustSim. Beautiful scenery, lovely detail. And Beirut scenery, OLBA, is actually freeware. Freeware, great scenery. I got it off AV Sim, and it was designed by Jad Abizaid and Mikkel Karam. They formed a team called Libor Simulations, and I think they're both residents of Lebanon. If that's the case, then let me tell you, you did a beautiful job with the scenery. Now, I have to warn everybody, it's great to download it, but the installation is for FSX. So how did I do it for P3D? Well, I've got this little extra computer here that I use for my pre-flight. So I loaded FSX onto it. Then I installed the uh, Beirut, um, Beirut scenery and it installed flawlessly and it made certain folders in the add-on scenery section. And so I simply copied those folders and brought them into P3D. And I'm using the version 5.2, by the way. 
and it worked perfectly, perfectly. So my gratitude for the designers of the Beirut scenery, because it is magnificent, really detailed, and I appreciate all the work that you did on it. And today's flight was requested by Walid Safa. Now, I'm going to go from Larnaca to Beirut. I did check earlier flights and I found out that Middle East Airlines flies regularly between the two points. They use Airbus's A320s, I think. We're not so dissimilar, but we'll be following that same route. And Middle East Airlines Flight 262 is the flight that we'll be following today. Or ME262. If you want to put that into Flight Aware, it'll give you all of the history of previous flights. If you're ready, Walid, are you ready? Then put on your first officer's cap and let's go into pre-flight and make ourselves a plan, shall we? Well, here we are, Walid. We're in Flight Aware, looking here at Middle East Airlines or Air Liban 262. And here's the designators underneath right here. So there's the ME262, how you can do a search for this. Now, this one departed from Larnaca in Cyprus, went to Lebanon. It left six minutes early and arrived 10 minutes early. So <laughs> we will try to do something similar, shall we? Make it a good flight. Here's the route that they took and went out from Larnaca straight across the eastern Mediterranean to land in Beirut. And looking here, 15,000 feet was their flight altitude, their cruising altitude. So we'll try to do the same thing. And it's looking like they came in on one particular runway. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. It says the taxi time at departure was 11 minutes and five minutes uh, taxi time when they arrived. Now, here is something you may be interested in. This is flight radar 24. Now, this is that same flight that we were just looking at in flight uh, aware, except here, I'm able to zoom in on their actual point of origin. And as you can see, right here it says, this is stand 25A, 25A. It wasn't mentioned on flight aware, so I had to check it in this. So we'll do that and it looks like it took the taxiway all the way up and then took off in that direction and then made a curve to go over to Beirut. Now, down here in Beirut, they must have switched the TCAS off about uh, right here because this is where we lost them. But right here, are the stands. This is 16, 17, 18 in this area here. So I'm going to try to make a beeline for this one. How does that sound, Walid? Okay. All right, then. Let's have a look at Windy. Now, here's Windy for Larnaca. Here you can see the wind is sort of sweeping in from the south. And it says wind is 180 degrees at 13 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more. There's a few clouds at 3,000 feet. Now it's promising temperatures of 28 degrees. Oh, I hope so. I like warm weather. QNH 1010, almost standard barometric pressure. 
looking at the runways well it does look like it's going to be the same runway for departure as that previous flight that we looked at so we'll be coming from here and then having to taxi all the way up to get down there so no wonder it took them 11 minutes to make their departure and over here this is the weather report for OLBA or Beirut and there's Beirut it says the wind is 270 degrees at six knots ceiling visibility okay VFR as well 25 degrees is the temperature and 1013 which is spot on standard barometric pressure for us and it looks like it has a history of VFR for the past several hours looking at the runways well the one that we saw the flight coming in on was this one now, whether or not we will be coming in on the same, I don't know, because the wind is somewhat different at 270 degrees. It's coming in across. So we may be coming in on a different runway. We'll have to wait and see until uh, ATC gives us a clearance to land. All right, let's make a flight plan, see what it gives us. We are, of course, Ryanair, and we are 186, and we are departing LC, LK, and we're going to go to OLBA, and there, right here, is our alternate. We'll look that up in a moment. There's our airframe, cruise profile 6, there's our registration, Flight time, it says one hour. Now that's block time. That's from gate to gate. It's showing a departure of runway 22, which no surprise is there, and an arrival of runway 21. Okay. We are, of course, full because we have one ton of what? <laughs> of course, champagne and caviar. <laughs> And let's have a look down here. Here's the route going across, coming in. Ah, comes in from the top and then coming in to land at OLBA. And, oh, we're going all the way down to Amman to, uh, for a, an alternate. That seems an awful long way to go. But that's what they're giving us. So we'll, we'll take it and see what happens. Okay, so we will go up here and we will save the flight. And then we'll generate the flight plan. Now the flight plan has given us origin, destination and still the same alternate. But it has given us the same flight level as the previous flight that we checked on, which is flight level 150. Airtime is 33 minutes. Now, block fuel is 5725. There's the route, and it says this is the planned optimum flight level. Since it's not a very long distance to go, it's not surprising. Down here, let's look at this. Um, Ryanair 186 is our designator. F-150 is the flight level, and then this is the flight route. OJAI is the alternate should things go pear-shaped. We'll need to know that we are cost index 6. We'll need also to know the average wind and speed direction for our cruising altitude. Down here, Block fuel is 5,725 kilograms, 5.7 metric tons. Reserves, 
well, th almost 3.2 metric tons there, 3164. The trip and the taxi time is likely to burn 1.8 metric tons. Wow, it does sound an awful lot, doesn't it? Especially with the prices of petrol today. And no tankering recommended. Here is the, the route that they've given us. If there are no changes, I'll put this in the description box below the video so you can follow it as well. Over here, we're going to need to know the information for the descent. Flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. I know that's well above us, but we'll put it in anyway, just in case there is an alternate, uh, an altitude change. There's the information that we'll need for 15,000 feet. And there's the information for 10,000 feet. Looking at the weather area over the area, there is no significant weather to worry about. So there's no frontal movements that we have to be concerned about. And looking at well, this is flight level 140. This is probably the closest that we've got. As you can see, all the general weather is sweeping up from the south. So we're going to be experiencing some crosswinds all the way. But notice uh, we're not too bad as far as speed of the crosswinds. The little feathers at the end of these indicators are not that strong, so it shouldn't be too bad. And then down here, this is our vertical profile, starting out from Larnaca, going all the way across, and then down to OLBA Beirut. The dotted line here is the tropopause, and it is well above us, and we it won't affect us in any way. But we've got some fairly light winds to crosswinds in this case, to deal with on our route, so we shouldn't be too impacted. Here we are, we click on flights, we click on new flights, and from SimBrief, and we use the latest one that we just made. Click on the first start of origin, open the charts list, and we're going to need to know the takeoff minimums right there. So we'll put that in the box at the bottom. Apron one is where we're going to be departing from. We'll be departing from runway 25 Alpha. So I'm going to pin that because it has, of course, here the information for the coordinates. There are no SIDs for our departure, we'll be simply taking off, making our own turn and coming up to the first waypoint. At our destination, open up the charts for it. We're going to need to know the parking stands and coordinates. And here are the main runways coming in. It's suggesting we're going to be coming in on runway 21. Okay, well, well, if that's what it is, that's what we'll be using. And it says it'll be the, let's look at this. This is the, the Kukla 1 Romeo. Here's the Kukla Waypoint, which gives it its name. So it looks like we're just going to come in here and right here at BA417. That's the initial approach fix. I'm going to pin that right there. Now we'll look at runway 21. And here it is. And I'm going to pin that. Let's look at the overlay. So this is the way to come in. And the final fix will be 200 degrees. So I'm going to go to approaches. And this is the RNAV runway 21 BA417, and that's the BA417. So I'm going to tick that, 
And look at that. It has filled in the blanks and completed the route for us. All right, just clean this up now. Click here, bring that up, bring that up, and zoom out, and there we have our route. Sabako here, yeah, Walid Safa. Athlon was Sathlon Minal Ryanair 186. Did I say that right? I hope so. I'm saying welcome and hello to you and do come in and take your seat. Don't forget, buckle up. Now, here we are at this magnificent scenery designed by flight or by Just Sim, Just Sim. And we are at stand 25A, and it is a lovely scenery, very detailed. I am showing 33, 34 frames per second, and I've got all the stops out on those three external monitors. I have one computer over here that runs the three external screens, and they are running at full 4K capacity, 4K. And the graphic card is a Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3090 with 24 gigabytes on it. So it's packed, it's ready to run and rumble. It is really very good. At the minute, I've got also Active Sky running and we are under a little bit of cloud so the sunshine has gone it goes in and out uh, which is you know i suppose typical but i just uh, i i'm a sunshine person myself that's what i prefer i'm going to show you this in detail and here i am looking at the left hand side here you can see the detail of the jetway we of course are not connected to the jetway we are Ryanair so we use our own stairs and then swinging around you can see the detail of the main terminal building very well put together there very well put together and you can see that we are at stand 25 alpha over there is 25 and then there's more scenery over there showing the right hand side. Lovely scenery. We'll have another look later on and have a look at it from a different angle. Right, I've got the charts ready and we are at this particular stand. Everything is set and running. I went out and I made sure that all the fuel was put on board and I've got 5.7 metric tons of fuel. How about that for a fill up? Imagine taking your car to a petrol station and say, fill it up, and then getting the bill for 5.7 tons of fuel. Oh my goodness, I think my heart would stop. <laughs> anyway, I also checked the tires, kicked them, made sure that they were well inflated, and I cleaned and washed and made the windows sparkle. Don't you think that they're beautiful and clean? Look at this. Look how clean they are. It's almost as though they're not there, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Right. We're ready to give ourselves a start. So turn on the battery. We have 26 volts. So that's enough to run the fuel pumps and to start the APU. And the APU, if you remember, is located in the tail of the aircraft. So in a moment, this dial is going to rise. The low oil pressure light has come on. That's a good sign. It says that there's activity out there. It'll rise and then descend back again. And when it does, this light will turn on and then we will have 115 volts right now it's not showing any voltage at all coming from the auxiliary power unit because 
it's still winding up, it's still getting itself started. Now it's starting to drop back, and in a moment this light will come on, and when it does, I'll switch the bus. Ah, oh, there it is. I've now switched the bus to the power coming off the APU, and I'm now showing 115 volts. So now I can do all the things I need to do in the cockpit to get it all programmed. So turn on the left and the right IRS, which is our GPS system. We need GPS on this flight. Galley is on. I always hope that they'll come in with a nice steaming cup of tea. I can but hope, you know. Turn on the emergency exit lights. No smoking. Fasten seat belts. Now these are the window heats. It heats up each of these four front windows. I always turn the probes on. I know that in uh, standard practice they don't usually do that, but I'm an old prop uh, L, uh, air pilot, so I always turn mine on in, in advance. And then I turn on the hydraulic pumps. The forward service hatch light is on, which means the door is open. The equipment light is on, which means the stairs are down. And that is where the passengers are starting to board. Oh, got a little bit of sunshine on the, on the scenery now, so you can see it a little bit better. The clouds come and go, don't they? And then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, and then turn on the packs, and listen. There, there's that rush of air that's now putting the temperature, building the temperature up and making sure things are comfortable on the inside of the cabin. And then I turn on the steady light so the ground crew knows that we're in here. And our passengers are starting to come out and get themselves loaded, so we need to go in now and program the FMC. All right, I press the top one for FMC. I check the air rack, make sure it's in date and that the program is current and that there are no errors. Then I do the position. As with any GPS, you have to put in your starting position. So for us, the starting position is LC, LK, and we are at gate 25 alpha. Let's see if it's in there. 25 alpha. And it did. It came up. Looking at the charts, just to make sure, the chart says it should be 34, 52.1, and 33, 36, and 6, which it is. So we have a correct GPS. So put that into the temporary. And then it has told the aircraft where we are and that's our start so now we go to route origin again is lc lk destination is olba we are ryanair ryr and we are 186 go to next page and then we'll put in the information right from the flight plan itself. And it says that our first waypoint is Rexel. So R E X A L And then we take the Romeo 19, Romeo 19. And that will take us to the Cutler waypoint so K U L A Cutler and that's it activate execute done go to the fix O L B A is our destination so I'll put that in we'll need a four mile circle a ten mile circle 
and the 30 mile circle. Why you ask? Well, the four mile circle is when Ryanair likes to drop the gear down. They leave it till the last minute usually. 10 miles? Well, then we need to be actually set up for landing at 10 miles, so flaps accordingly, flaps 10 at least at that. 30 miles as far as the aircraft is concerned and P3D, 30 miles is the point at which we can actually contact the ATC at our destination and that's simply a restriction within P3D itself. Obviously, if we're in a real aeroplane and we have line of sight, if it's 100 miles and we can see them or hear them, then we can connect and get our permissions. Now we go to descent, go to forecast. Transition level is flight level 150 for Lebanon, so I'm going to put that in. Then I'm going to put the values in for these three particular uh, levels, which are flight level 200, which is 20,000 uh, 20, feet, 15,000 feet, and then 10,000 feet. 1012 is the QNH at our destination. And then looking at the chart, we'll get the information then for our descent. So at flight level 200, the wind speed and direction is 199 at 40. So 199 at 40. At 15,000 feet, it is 192 at 31, 192 at 31. 10,000 feet, it is 186 at 21. So 186 at 21. And then we execute that. Go to departures. Now, before we put this in, we need to contact and listen in to the ATIS. And the ATIS frequency is 126 decimal five five so one two six Larnaca International Airport Information Alpha one zero five nine Zulu wind two six five and four visibility greater than twenty miles sky condition ceiling one five thousand four hundred broken temperature one eight dew point altimeter one 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 zero zero eight Landing and departing runway 2 2. VFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have. Alpha. Right, we have Alpha. And it's saying that uh, the temperature is 18 degrees. Wow, that agrees then with the true air temperature that we have on the screen here. And. Dew point is 11, altimeter is 1008, so I'm going to put in 1008 in that. And now I'm going to, and it says that we are departing on runway 22 for VFR. So we're 22, and that's all we have to put in. Execute that. Go to departure and arrivals. We're told that we're going to be coming in on RNV21. We'll be using the Cutler 1 Romeo with a transition of BA417. And execute that. Now I go back to legs. And this is where I'm going to go through and check the route. So I'm going to ground. World travel minor eight one one. Request taxi to the gate. World. So I'm switching now to the plan so that we can go through that route. Right. I'm just going to step through each of these. There's switching to plan, so it changes the screen into a circle, and then I can step through each of these to see if there's any discontinuity. There's the BA417, and we should be at 4,000 feet at that particular point. And then it brings us down to intercept the runway coming in to land on runway 21 
at OLBA right there. No problems, we have a good route. So I switch back to map, turn on the yaw damper, make sure the flight continuity light went out. Over here, I'm going to put in 15,000 feet because that's going to be our cruising altitude. Up here, I'm going to put in 15,000 feet. Now this is for pressurization. Now our airport elevation at our destination is 85 feet. So I'm going to put in 100 because these are in blocks of 50 and 100 is the nearest one to it. Since we're using runway 22 to depart, it is 220 degrees on our course. So I'm going to put in 220 on each of these. This is the compass heading. And I'll do yours if that's okay. All right, coming up there. There we go. Good, we've got that in. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into route and perform the initialization. Now, I did a calculation. We have the fuel on board, the reserves, which are 3,164, which is near enough to 3.2. The trip and taxi is 1845, which comes to 5,009 kilograms of fuel. So that's rounding out to five. Reserves, as I said, was 3.2. Cost index is six double click this one and it calculates everything for us we're putting in 5150 for our flight route the cruise wind is 195 at 23 so 195 at 23 the transition altitude now is different from the transition level but the out transition altitude is 13,000 feet. So I'll put that in there, execute that, go to N1 limit, put in the 18 degrees and see it becomes larger. Go to takeoff, we're going to be using 10 degrees of flap. Double click this and it tells us that the center of gravity is 23.8 the trim wheel will be 4.7 one click on each of these gives us the b1 the rotate and the liftoff speed of 145 so i'm going to put 145 now in up here okay and now over on the other wheel i'm going to put in the decision height which is 1200 feet now that's the at that particular point when the barometer tells us that we are at 1200 feet it'll tell us minimums minimums and that's what we'll have to make a decision at that point whether we're going to land or execute a missed approach so we've got the 1200 in there I'm going to put this to put the weather radar on my side and click it to 20 miles for uh, range. I'm going to double click for data here. I'm going to put terrain on your side, double click for data. And now I'm going to turn on the TCAS. Our passengers are all on and they're receiving their briefing at the moment, so I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the door okay now I'm going to put the flight director on here flight director on there 
VNAB button, LNAB button, we have a good flight plan and now I'm going to arm the throttle and I'm going to put the VOR1 in and I'm going to put the frequency in for the Beirut VOR. List. So the fuel is on and is all correct. Windows are all locked, checked. Seatbelt signs are on, good. And door lights are out. MCP is programmed and correct. Takeoff thrust bugs are all on. Rudder air long trim is free and correct. Now, taxi takeoff briefing. We're going to push back. Our nose will go to the right and our tail to the left. And now I'm going to turn on the anti-collision light. So we're now ready to start the engines. And here, right here is the Navigraph chart so you can see where we are for our taxi and departure and our run. Okay. So looking good across the board. Which engine would you like to start first? Well, number one or number two? Number two? All right. In that case, I'm going to switch this then to generator two, and that will be for the main engines. So now I'm going to ask the people at the bottom to give us a pushback. And are you ready? Here we go then. Cockpit to ground. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback tail to the left. Release burden brake, please. Parking brake is off. Now I'm going to turn off the air conditioning and get Brakes ready released. to start engine number two. Right, switching number two. The start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 is building up. When this gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel and to get an ignition. So it's coming along very nicely. 20, 22, 23, and 24. Introducing the fuel. Now, the next thing to look for is the engine gas temperature. Look at that. Look how quickly it's heating up. And now I'm going to look for the low oil pressure light to go out, which it did. This is building up very nicely. Listen for the engines. There it is. There's the engine starting. Now I'm going to look for 115 volts up here. There it is. Now I'm switching to generator number one and turning on the engines the start valve has opened the n2 is spinning up when this gets to 24 i'll be putting in the fuel and coming up there it is putting in the fuel push back complete parking brake set parking brake is set now i'm looking for the engine gas temperature to rise and it is I'm going to look now for the low oil pressure light to go out. We're doing well. Engine gas Steer temperature is pulling up. Watch for the salute release from guidance on your right after the flight. Thank you, gentlemen. And once this is stabilized, I'm going to see 115 volts up here. We have 115 volts on both engines. Now I'm waiting for this tick mark to go away so that we, there we are. Now I can switch to the generators coming from the main engines. I can turn on the heating and air conditioning again, turn off the APU and turn off the APU there. Turn on the three taxi lights and things are looking good. Now I'm gonna go to laps 10. I'm going to verify the takeoff speeds as it's requesting. There's one correction to make. There we go. Okay, we're now flaps 10. Take a good look around, make sure nothing 
something is coming in our way and then we're going to go out here, turn left and go down to the active runway. You can follow this on the Navigraph screen on your bottom right. Switching to RTO and now let's do the quick check. Recall is check, generators check, anti-ice not required, isolation valve, engine start levers idle V10, light deck door closed and locked, flaps, green light, stabilizer trim, auto brake is RTO, speed brake lever down V10, ground equipment is clear, we are ready to taxi. Okay, get myself in position, brake off, and here we go. And move over here to the line. And we will follow the exact same taxi route that the previous flight that we're following, Middle East Airlines Flight 262. So we'll go left here, make sure everything is clear, Charlie Victor, Charlie Alpha, contact tower on 120.575 when ready. 
Well, we have another aircraft behind us. But it looks like we are going to be number one to depart, which is good news. Although there is an aircraft over there that's moving. And we've got another kamikaze coming straight for us. Do we have a bullseye on our aircraft paint somewhere that says hits us? Go on, get out of it. Ignores us, totally ignores us. Lining up ground, orbit 5457, ready to copy IFR clearance to Luxor International. Orbit 5457, is cleared to Luxor International Airport. Oh, it looks like they're coming up in front of us, so we'll be number two till that, and uh, take off. Orbit 5457, clear to Luxor International Airport, has filed fly runway heading, climb and maintain 10,000, departure on 121.2, squawk 0541. Orbit 5457, red back is correct. Contact ground on 11 minor point four when ready to taxi. about in the sea. Look at that. Dolphins. Magnificent. I hadn't noticed that. You know, that is really, really clever. Great scenery. And there's the one coming into land. And this scenery, of 
course, is by Just Sim. And they've certainly done a grand job in getting all of the detail, haven't they? We'll be given our clearance to depart in just a moment here. Yeah? Do the check. Briefing as engine bleeds is on. Continuous cabin is secure. We are Pacific 1833. Contact ground on 11 one, one, minor point 4. Ryanair 186. Cleared for takeoff. Runway 22. Right, I'm starting the clock, we are cleared to take off, so I'm going to move out now and we'll do a departure before anything else comes in to stop us. Advancing power to N1, pushing the toga button, and we are rolling.
me tell you where we are. There you can see the mountains of Lebanon. They're directly ahead of us. I've got the pass and seatbelt sign is on. And we are 30 miles now from the airport. And that's according to the DME on the KAD radio. There are still quite a few clouds around, but anyway, let's listen in to the ATIS and see what they say.
ahead of us that we're going to have to deal with. It's descending. All right, I'm switching to continuous and preparation for landing. Good, we are prepared for landing. Right, there is a 
aircraft ahead of us, so let's slow ourselves up a little bit. We need to not be on its tail, otherwise we'll be given a go around. Gear is down, lights are green. Flaps are down, lights are green. Pacific Airlines 454, turn next taxiway. I don't have the runway in sight. Oh yes I do, I have the runway in sight. Approaching minimums. So, all lights are on. Minimums. Attendance, buckle up. One thousand. One thousand. Pacific at one four five four. Turn next taxiway. Okay, the runway is clear, so we should be good to land. All right, I'll do it. I have control. And we're coming on to final. We have two white, two red.
impressed with this scenery so far, and this, remember, is freeware. And it's made by a couple of designers by the name of Jad Abizide and Nikal Karam. They formed a little group called the Libor Simulations Team. They put this scenery on AV Sim and it is freeware, free to download. Quite a bit of traffic out here right next to the runway. Well, we're going to turn right up here. My frame rate is now 1920, 1920, just hovering between the two. So there's a lot of detail that's gone into this scenery. And remember, it was made for FSX. And yet I have it loaded into P3D version 5.2. So there will be some changes in the frame rate. The external screens are all 4K. And here we go, we're crossing the first runway. Looks clear. An aircraft landed over there. Let's see if we can make it past this before he interferes with us. There's the main terminal building, just over to our left. So we've got one more runway to cross, which is coming up ahead of us. And it is clear. And there's another one coming in to land up, up in the distance. Busy airport. Now we'll be turning left at this next intersection here. This is the Echo intersection on our left. some cloud over Lebanon today. Beirut has got some low cloud over the city and the buildings over there. Well, we'll turn left in here. We'll go up until we get to the November intersection on our left, which case will make our right and then look for stand 17. Stand 17, 17. Oh, beautiful detail. Look at that. Have a closer look at the scenery here. Look over here on the left. You can see there's shrubs and grass. Great detail there. And then over here we've got the fire department. There's the fire engines. Oh, and they've even got an ambulance out there. Fortunately, we didn't need it. <laughs> but look at the exquisite detail. They've gone to some trouble to 
really make these buildings look very, very good. And there's cargo containers, baggage containers. Aircraft parked over there. And we're coming up on the November and we have a an aircraft right in front of us that's decided is going to play oh maybe not so where's he going to go not into stand 17 please don't go on stand 17 no looks like we're all right Well, there's stand 17 over there, so that's where we'll make it. Look at the detail. Isn't that incredible? Passengers are disembarking, so I'm going to, looks everything is good, fuel off, APU off, battery off, and shutdown is complete. Well, there you have it. We followed Middle East Airlines Flight 262 from door to door, and we did it in the same time. We were... 32 minutes on the clock from taking off to landing and we followed their flight route and we followed their altitude as well there were some very interesting clouds but we managed to do everything without crashing always a good thing that isn't it any landing you can walk away from is a good landing oh yes I like that and this of course is freeware scenery and it's by Libor Simulations team and you can download it at AV Sim. Walid, thank you so much for the suggestion and I did enjoy making this flight. It was an absolute delight. It's really nice to be in Beirut once again after all of these years been many 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 years since I've been here so thank you for the invitation and everyone else I will see you next week on another flight of Ryanair 186 okay take care be good be safe bye everybody